G'day and as you can see I'm starting to make the videos again and I thank you for waiting. Uh, I'm continuing in this video the series of 100 integrals produced by Jim Coronius all those years ago and this is integral number 19 in his list. It's very very similar to integral number 18 which has the a squared and the x squared reversed. So very very similar indeed. But this has quite a, a pleasant surprise in store for us. In order to get to it, we have to unlock the method for evaluating this integral. And it has to do with this most difficult part, which is the radical in the denominator. You notice it's a difference between squares. And whenever we have a sum or a difference between squares, uh, when we have a square of a constant and a square of the variable, it usually is unlocked using one of our three Pythagorean triads. So I'm going to explain how to choose which one, in case you haven't had that experience. Our three triads are cos squared theta, I'll use theta, uh, plus sine squared theta is one. Uh, we also have tan squared theta plus 1 is sec squared theta. And we have cotan or cot theta squared theta plus 1 is cosec squared theta. Now, in Australia we write it this way. Um, in the United States you would write CSC squared for cosec squared. Uh, please bear with me. I'll just use the notation that I'm familiar with. And I guess you'll have to translate a little. But what we're looking for, these are variables, or the, they contain the variables. And here's our constant, which is 1. And we can make it a squared easily by multiplying through by a squared. So you can see the method. Now, in order to get a negative a squared or a minus a squared, this would have to move over to this side. Of the equation, if we were looking at this equation, this a squared would have to move over here. Now, you can see that if we brought this a squared over here, then one of these would have to go to the other side and it would become negative. And we would have our difference between squares, for example, a squared sine squared theta minus a squared would have negative a squared cos squared theta on this side just by a simple rearranging of that triad or, or that um, identity and unfortunately it means that this if you could imagine that as x squared minus a squared would give us a negative square which makes it very difficult to take the square root because it's negative. So we're not going to use this one. But I think you can see that in both of these last two equations, if I move the a squared over there, we do in fact have a difference between squares with a variable squared minus a squared, variable squared minus a squared equaling a perfect square. And of course if we need to take the square root of both sides that's quite manageable. So what it suggests is that either of these substitutions would work. In other words, <clears throat> if we let x equal a sec theta or x equal a cosec theta we will be able to get this nice uh, difference between squares and resolve it in this way. Really, either of them are fine. Now, which one would you choose? Well, there's not a great deal of difference between them. I'm going to choose this, this uh, first one, but I suggest that you uh, make an exercise of solving this equation using the other substitution of a cosec theta at some point. But here we go. We're going to say let x equal 
a sec theta. Now I know it took a while for me to explain how to get here, but with practice, you see this structure and you think, I need a trigonometric substitution, and you see the difference between squares, and you think, where, where, how am I going to arrange these to get the negative one in the appropriate place from these three Pythagorean identities? And you work it out very quickly. Okay, we need to get in down to it now. If we're making this substitution, then in place of this x, we can write a sec theta. That's not a problem. In place of this x, we can write it as well. But what do we do with the dx? Well, we need to work this out. So dx d theta would be something. I'm going to put the... Oh, let's do it. I often just write the d theta on the other side straight away. But what's the derivative of this? Well... I'm actually going to think of this because with all of our training we think in terms of sine, cosine and tangent fun ratios more easily than the uh, reciprocal ratios. I'm going to call this cos theta all to the negative 1. So when I find the derivative, the negative 1 comes down, the index drops by 1, and I multiply by the derivative of what's inside, which is negative sine theta. Now, a negative times a negative is a positive. We have an A. I have a sine theta. And I've got a cos theta to the power negative 2. Well, I'm going to write it on the bottom as cos squared theta. Now, I'm going to go a little bit further than that. I could just make use that substitution straight away, but I know that sine theta on cos theta is tan theta, and because I'm going to get a tan theta here from my substitution, I thought it might be nice to have a tan as well. So this is just a little bit of thinking ahead. So if the x d theta is that, then dx will equal a tan theta sec theta d theta. So we must go through the choice first and then find the derivative. And now we're in a position to make all of our substitutions. Actually, I realise I'm not going to have room there, so I'll tuck it in underneath, which is something I normally don't do. But let's work this integral out. The dx I'm going to replace with a tan theta sec theta d theta. That's taken care of. The x is a sec theta. And this radical now is going to be x squared, which is this squared. minus a squared. Now immediately we have some benefits. Notice these a's divide out. Uh, I will say I don't use the word cancel. Uh, I know it's used a great deal in mathematical circles but psychologically when I say cancel and when my students say cancel we think that it disappears and that there's nothing there. In other words, zero. In fact, they divide out and there's a one left. And for those of you who are teachers, uh, you probably have discovered this already, but when I ask my students, when they cancel it out and say, what's left? Quite often they'll say nothing, zero, if I ask for what number. And I have to remind them that they're treating this as a fraction and dividing by a. So I use the term dividing out. So we're going to divide sec theta from the numerator and denominator. And that simplifies this enormously. Also, a sec squared, a squared, sorry, a squared sec squared theta minus a squared is this. 
In fact, this is where it all came from. We were trying specifically to sort this out. There it is, so we can replace it with that. So on the top, I'm going to have tan theta, d theta, and on the bottom, I'm going to have the root of this, which is a squared tan squared theta. Now, we should at this point introduce absolute value signs. I'm not going to uh, get too tied up with that at this point. I'm looking at the process here. The square root of a squared tan squared theta is a tan theta. And the tan thetas disappear. How spectacular. It is quite a surprise. And a being a constant, we can write out the front. Integral d theta. Now, who would have imagined? Who would have imagined that a, a complicated looking integral like this would end up literally being one of the simplest you could imagine once the variable is changed? So, what's this equal to? Well, I am going to have to erase this, but we're going to continue up here and evaluate this and change this variable back to x. So let's have a look. I'll use my arrow and here we have it. The integral of 1 over a multiply sorry the 1 over a multiplied by the integral of d theta is in fact 1 over a times theta plus a constant of course since it is an indefinite integral what's theta equal to well you might remember that our substitution was x equals a sec theta that means that sec theta equals a, sorry, x over a. Or, if you prefer the reciprocal, cos theta equals a over x. Therefore, we can substitute for theta either of two expressions. We could say theta is the inverse secant of x on a, so I'll put that. That's one solution. Or the other solution would be, I'll, I'll just write or. Or the other solution would be that theta is the inverse cosine of a on x. That's just our little bit of work we do on the side of the page. Normally I would have all of this set out down one side of the page and all these extra little calculations and substitutions done on the right hand side. And uh, I try very, very hard to get my students to consider how they set their work out on the page and how clearly it's explained because I believe that clarity both comes from the mind but also the clarity on the page influences how you think and uh, so I, I tend to emphasize a great deal clear setting out despite what it looks like when it's all cranked up here but there we go we've we've evaluated this particular integral with an interesting trigonometric substitution ended up with a very simple one and we've got two alternative uh, ways of expressing the result. It was surprisingly straightforward uh, after all that, but you certainly need to know your trigonometry. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, I have, I'm going to try and push to finish Karanius's list. I've also got a few other videos of other interesting matters to share with you over the next few weeks as well. So please keep watching and I thank you for watching this.